This is the 2024 Hyundai Palisade XRT. It's a family-friendly crossover with off-road aspirations. Is it any good? We're gonna put it to the test right now on Driving Sports TV. Today we're out here at the new Driving Sports TV Proving Grounds on the Washington State Peninsula, where we're still building trails and challenge features. In fact, I have 10 tons of granite that were just dropped off over there to build a rock crawling feature with. So I got that to look forward to. Clearly we're not rock crawling in this, but we have roughed in a couple of forest trails and I wanna see how well this thing can handle them. Before we hit the course, let's check out all the features on this 2024 Hyundai Palisade XRT. Refreshed just last year, for 2024, the Hyundai Palisade is a holdover with only minor package adjustments. The model we're looking at today is the XRT. This is as close as Hyundai brings the Palisade to an off-road ready trim. If you're looking for skid plates and all-terrain tires, you won't find them here. This trim maxes out with a blacked out grille, bumper, and lower door garnishes. This XRT came with the optional H-Track all-wheel drive system. It has a variety of drive modes that we will try out in a little bit. It also has hill descent control, a lock button, and 8 inches of ground clearance. Price as you see it here with special hyper white paint, $45,550 US dollars including destination. Under the hood is a 3.8 liter V6 making a peak 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. It's connected to a standard 8-speed automatic. EPA rates economy at 19 miles to the gallon in the city and 24 on the highway. The tires are Hankook Ventus Noble 2 High Performance All Seasons. They are in a 245-50 R20 fitment. So not only are these all-season tires, they're all-season high performance tires and they're wrapped around 20-inch wheels. So about as far away from all-terrain tires as you can get. In the back, there's 18 cubic feet behind the third row, 45.8 behind the second. Fold all the seats flat for up to 86.4 cubic feet of overall cargo capacity. And yeah, it's totally flat, so you can even sleep in it. I fit. Under the floor here, we get a jack and extra storage space. Under this is a spare, but you have to use tools to get it out. Just kind of annoying. One thing I do like about the packaging of the Palisade is that an adult can fit in both the second and third rows. We get a couple captain's chairs. They are adjustable with armrests. Let's put that armrest, come on, it's like a ratchet style. There we go, if I want it really high, or I could have it lower. Uh, I also can slide forward and back and adjust my tilt, which is nice. Down here, I get my own air con, I get a 12 volt socket, noticeably absent, no seat warmers in this second row. I do, however, get a USB-C socket in the seat back up here. And then over on the right, two cup holders, plus a privacy screen. Here we are inside the 2024 Palisade, and it frankly might as well be the 2023 model because this looks exactly like the one we filmed last year. Uh, we took it out into the snow, had a good time, until we didn't. <laughs> but uh, you can see that video on our YouTube channel. But I'm just going to quickly overview here. We have this pseudo digital gauge cluster up front. It does have a combination of LEDs and LCDs, but it's not a big digital display. It's basically um, just speedo tack and then has this little multi-function color display in the middle. Over here we have a nice widescreen infotainment system. It has mapping, also supports XM satellite radio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, but it does not support wireless. Kind of surprising, actually. Uh, we do have hard buttons down here to be able to hit all of the features here without, you know, fingerprinting up the main screen. Uh, and then we also have aircon down here as well. Below that, we do get push button PRND, whether you like it or hate it, this is what it has. And then to the right of that, we have all these different modes, which basically adjust the all wheel drive, throttle, 
and ABS systems based on terrain and based on what you want to do. Now there is no actual proper off-road mode here. Uh, best we can really do is probably smart or snow and then hit that little center lock button. And the center lock button, it, it's not a locking differential. It basically has a clutch in the middle that shifts power from the front to the back and that can engage and disengage as necessary. Even if you hit lock, it'll still disengage if it detects that it's going to overheat. So it's not like a proper locker. Uh, it is just suggesting to the computer that it should probably maintain that split of power. And of course power is variable front to back uh, and side to side using brake vectoring which we'll explore a little bit later. We have hill descent control system here. They call it what is downhill brake control. Uh, and then we even have a parking camera. Higher trim levels have full surround view systems. And down here we have this kind of cool bin uh, although that pattern really messes with my eyes. Open it up, you get a nice big bin that also has a place to charge a phone. Uh, it also has USB-A for some reason. They didn't do USB-C here, even though you have USB-Cs in the back. And then you have these little deployable cup holders, which are kind of neat. So yeah, there's that. Seats, comfortable. Get three layers of heat, no cooling at this trim level. And then we also get a small sunroof. This is, of course, equipped with all the standard Hyundai active safety stuff. You have collision mitigation, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alerts. And this one actually has backup sonars, which is neat, as well as that whole rear view camera thing going on there. So what are we going to do today? Well, we are going to put this through some of the rough cut trails that are here at Approving Grounds. We're in the process of building trails and articulation courses, all the types of things to be able to test um, everything from modest to more advanced off-road capabilities and to really stress all-wheel drive systems. It's going to take a little while to get this whole thing put together, but we're here. Let's try this thing out. But first, we're going to hit the street to see how this thing drives on normal roads. Then we're going to bring them back here and get dirty. When you consider the price of this vehicle ringing in around $45,000, it actually is a pretty good value when you compare it to what other vehicles are on the market. I mean, you're gonna spend five grand more to get that Woodland Toyota Sienna we just tested. And this being a three row crossover, yeah, it's gonna compete against minivans because why wouldn't it? I mean, this is basically a vehicle for people who need a van but don't want a van. They get this. And overall, this is a really nice vehicle. It's a good size package with three rows. You still get room behind that third row for cargo. It's very comfortable up in the front here. I have a good view. I get multi-zone climate control. I have a nice touch screen. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto support, albeit does require cabling. Um, yeah, overall pretty good. Oh yeah, did I even mention V6 and all wheel drive? And this costs less than the average purchase price of a vehicle today. So is it perfect? Well, no, it's not perfect. I mean, some of the plastics are kind of on the cheap looking side. Um, my knee keeps hitting the center console on the side. I feel like I'm gonna get like a, build up a callus on the right side of my knee because it keeps rubbing up against it. But overall, what you're getting is a very good value and a very good option. So if you are considering a Palisade, and you want something that looks a little bit cooler than the standard Palisade and is nicely equipped, this XRT is a very good option. Now, do not buy this if you are expecting more off-road capability, because um, it doesn't really have that. It has the same eight inches of ground clearance, all season radials, it has no off-road programs. Oddly enough, those are available in some international markets, but they're not available in the US. We do get that center lock, which really isn't a lock. They advertise it as a differential. Really what it is, is locking the center clutch, which is a computer controlled clutch. And even when you hit lock, it can still vary that torque front to back. Uh, it's not like a differential, so please don't confuse that. And, and again, I'm, I'm saying for the money and for the size and for the intention, this is a very good vehicle. So if your primary intention is to shuttle the kids around, say on paved streets, maybe go to Whole Foods every once in a while, go out and buy this vehicle. It's very good. I like it a lot. I even have a friend who bought one. He still loves it and he's owned it for years. So you can feel good about buying a Palisade. 
So let's talk about this motor. It is, of course, a transverse V6. And hit the power. Yeah, yeah, there's some power there, but it's not a particularly fast engine, especially when you compare it to what Toyota has just rolled out with the new Grand Highlander with 400 pound-feet of torque. Yeah, this does not compete. And it's funny because that is not even a six. That is a turbo four with a hybrid assist. This is instead relying on displacement and it does a good job. Now, granted, it's on the smaller side for a V6 and you are still getting, you know, the EPA rating of a V6. But I think for most drivers, this is going to be good. This vehicle is good. The engine is good. We do have several drive modes here because this does not have adaptive suspension. It does not have a turbo. It does not have a lot of things that it can actively adjust on the fly. What this will do is it alters throttle, traction control, and all-wheel drive system. I'm in comfort right now, which is the default. Let's go ahead and switch it over to sport. My gauge cluster turns red. And now when I stab the throttle, yeah, it feels basically the same because wide open throttle is red the same whether or not you're in comfort or sport mode. But my tip in is going to be faster. That little bit of throttle is going to give more gas than a little bit of throttle on comfort mode. So if you want to drive more aggressive, obviously sport is the good choice. Going through the corners, yeah, it's pretty fun. Handling, eh, you know, the steering's a bit on the it's a little bit on the light and vague side, uh, but the suspension seems to be nicely tuned for everyday driving. No real complaints here considering what this is and its intentions. The seat, pretty comfortable. I have driven this a bunch this week and I have no complaints. It actually has really nice support. I like the power adjustments. The lower lumbar control is really nice to tune that just right for my lower back. You do feel the size a little bit when we're on these really narrow bridges. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny because when the Palisade first came out, it was slightly bigger than most of the three row crossovers you could buy on the market. And slowly, everybody's kind of been catching up. I mean, this is slightly bigger than the Toyota Highlander. And so what did Toyota respond with? Well, they didn't make the Highlander bigger, they made the Grand Highlander, which is even bigger than this. And I love the Grand Highlander. It really hits the mark for people who need a van, but want an SUV. And it has great performance, great power. We did a snow test with it, it did just great. This one is starting to feel its age, but I expect a new one will come out in the next couple years and we'll have a new conversation about the Palisade at that time. A couple things that are a little bit out of date here, this gauge cluster being this LED LCD combo. I never really cared for this layout. All this piano black up on this surround, it, it's a lot of surround, more so than the displays actually are. Uh, we're starting to get more streamlined looks in these departments now. There's some cost cutting here, but in terms of comfort, in terms of performance, it still is a good option. This does have adaptive cruise control with lane centering. I'll go ahead and turn it on. I'll set my speed and now it'll basically keep the speed going at my intended target until I get close to a vehicle in front of me and then it'll gap that vehicle according to how much gap I have set. And what we have here, we have one, two, three, four, we have four different levels of gapping. Will it track in the middle of the lanes? Let's make sure that that's on. I got my little green steering wheel and let's see what we get. It's tracking. Let's kind of push it off a little bit. Is it going to center us? Yeah, keeping us center. Okay, that's pretty good. No other bells and whistles to really speak of here. We do get blind spot warning and of course collision mitigation as well. Uh, so that's all good. There is no surround view camera system though. So if you really want that, you're gonna have to go up a trim on this vehicle. This one just has backup camera basically. I think we've established this thing is pretty good on paved roads, but how is it when the road ends and the going gets tough? As of the time of filming about a week ago, I signed all the papers on a new five acre location out here on the Washington State Peninsula where I am building an off-road test park. That's right, we're gonna have a new HQ for Driving Sports TV. It will take a little while though to get going and we will do a full introduction video once all the courses are ready to go. However, I do have some courses under construction that I think I can drive this vehicle on. 
Will it get through? I have absolutely no idea because I have not taken anything except my truck through this course. If we do have trouble getting through this course, I am prepared to make modifications to the course because the course I'm gonna take this through is specifically designed for these type of vehicles, or at least it will be when it's done. So I might make modifications depending on how well this vehicle can get through it. Now there is a log section that I think is probably too aggressive for this, but I'm gonna try it out anyway, just because I'm curious how far we can get into it. So our new proving grounds out here on the Washington State Peninsula are, the, are being built at a site that used to be a historic gravel pit. That means that the surface texture here is actually very different from our mountain test course out in central Washington, which is kind of a lot of mud and rock. This is sand and rock. And that makes actually a very large difference in the way that the vehicle can deal with traction because here you're digging through a small layer of dirt and then immediately getting to sand and gravel that drains very quickly. So you don't end up with like big pools of endless mud like we do out at our central Washington course. So what I have here is a roughed in version of our easy course. This winds through the woods. It has a bunch of off kilter areas and it starts actually with a little bit of a climb. That's not a huge climb, obviously, but I think that with vehicles like this, you can't get too extreme because they're just not really designed for extreme use. It has long overhangs in the front and the back. It has just standard all season radials. And of course, our terrain modes are pretty limited. I'm gonna go ahead and put on that center lock. I'm gonna keep the drive mode in smart because that's what I was advised to do by Hyundai at one time. And we're gonna to try to climb up this. And I have not taken anything other than my truck through this course yet. And yes, it still has a lot of vegetation on the ground because I've just simply roughed it in I have not cleared the course at all yet, so you'll hear some little things of like branches and blackberries hitting, and I'm also not gonna try to jam through the course too quick, simply because I don't wanna hit something that I'm not expecting. Um, but I will use a little momentum in places like right here where I clearly need it. Get a little momentum to get up the bump. Uh, the trees are very close. See, I had a little lateral slide there actually, because I was slipping on the veg. <laughs> tricky, tricky. Now we're going to have a little bit of a dip here in front of the dead tree. And I think my biggest concern with this really isn't the all-wheel drive system here. It's really a matter of clearances. This is so soft when you put a vehicle on it. Things that might have felt like, you know, oh, I have this much clearance. Well, once you squish things down, you, your ground actually rises in the front and back. Also, this is a big vehicle and I'm driving it between trees that are very tight. Come on, can we get that? I have lock and smart mode on. Oh, oh, H-Track got us through. It pushed power exactly like we needed. Okay. We're not done yet. Continue on through the woods. Hopefully no sliding into trees. I think we'll be fine. We got a tight exit here. Now on the exit, there is a berm I gotta worry about here. I was gonna worry about that tree back there which we're gonna rub. I bet we're gonna slide. Yep, right on the plastic. That's okay, that wasn't too bad. All right, well, it made it through that. So now let's see how it does over a bunch of logs. So what we have here are a series of logs that have been slightly buried in the sand. Yeah, this whole section is sand right beneath the dirt. Now these are very large logs and I've placed some granite rocks to help get through the sand so we just don't dig down in high center. Uh, the trick here is gonna be, of course, well, if I had a front camera, I would see if I can align the wheels with the rocks, but I don't have that luxury because this just has a backup camera. Um, but what I am concerned most here is actually clearance because not only does this only have eight inches of ground clearance, which is actually pretty good for a three row, but not a lot in the realm of off-roading, it has a very long wheelbase. So I'm not really sure where these wheels are gonna sit and how they're gonna articulate over these logs. Will we scrape? Will wheels spin? Let's find out. First vehicle over this, other than my test truck. So personally, I don't think it really matters what drive mode we're in, uh, but I know a lot of people will be like, oh, put it into 
snow because that'll be the most extreme power transfer. So I'm going to do that. We're in snow and we have that center lock turned on. Nothing else really to do here. I want to go wide. I don't want to hit that manzanita on the inside. But I don't really know where my wheels are. I got a big hood in front of me. So we're going to start crawling over. We have to crawl over very slow because the last thing I want to do is launch this into a high centered situation. So come on, here we go. Oh, oh. It's getting us up and over. I don't want to do that call on Monday. Say, hey, yeah, Hyundai, I ripped off your undercarriage. Sorry about that. Yeah, let's avoid that. Up and over. Of course, the logs aren't just straight. They're actually in a variety of different angles to give us different wheel placements. Uh, so we're not just doing two wheels at a time. So each wheel should be struggling its own struggle. <laughs> Okay. Ooh. We got over it. So we're not quite done yet. There's one more challenge to get out of here and that's a dip on the exit. And I also have to negotiate not running into this little tree here, which should be fine. But the way we swing around, it gets really close on these big vehicles. My truck gets very close to it. We're good. Yeah, we're about within six, seven inches back there. And now the nose is going to dip in. Hopefully we don't hit anything. Now, luckily this is mostly sand, but of course it's wet sand. So it's not as soft as it may look. <laughs> we're dragging a little power up and over. Yes. And we did it. Well, I'm pretty impressed. That did actually a really good job. Now, this wasn't like an extreme climbing test at all. That's its own special beast, and that's what we use our mountain course for. But I think all things considered, if you are looking for a family-oriented three-row crossover, you want to hit the beach and maybe hit a trailhead or something like that, this 2024 Hyundai Palisade is a good option. I don't think it's very exciting though. I think that there's better options in terms of like more power, more capability. But if you want something that basically hits all of the check boxes, 2024 Hyundai Palisade. I really appreciate you guys coming along for me on the first run of our easy course. I do have a lot of work to do still with it, but it's mostly put together there. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos. We make them for you. Hope you enjoy them. And I'm really stoked to get this proving ground up and going. We'll see you again right here real soon. Hit that subscribe button.